Hey guys, this is Marvin at Driven by Graphics and uh, basically just wanted to show you real quick how I set up um, my Corel files to be print, printed on my uh, Roland uh, VersaCam and then cut on my GraphTech um, Final Cutter. So these will end up being die cut. Um, I actually print this on 54 inch wide material. They're sideways here because this is actually how they're going to come out of the printer with the bottom edge um, uh, coming out of the printer first is how I set this up. Um, now again I print this actually on 54 inch material uh, but I actually set this up as a 25 inch uh, wide panel and then I duplicate it twice twice across and it's just the setup that I have here. My GraphTech uh, plotter itself that I have is only 48 inches wide so I can't take the, the full 54 inch uh, wide material and so basically I cut this into two um, roughly 25 it ends up being about you know, you're half in the 54 inch roll so about 27 inches um, in total width that I feed into the uh, into my graph tech but nonetheless um, this is the, the file that I have set up here I do end up basically making um, roughly about a half inch on each side of this is how I have it set up again this is for my particular setup and what I've got going on here um, on either side I have half an inch set up here and then on basically this uh, bottom edge and the top edge I have right at about an inch and a quarter um, so overall uh, additional space so this file just the graphics portion is right at 16 inches and then with the inch and a quarter here and inch and a quarter here you end up getting it an extra two and a half inches and so that gets me up to an eight, 18 and a half inch um, kind of page size if you will here um, again, this is some stuff that I went through a while back and figure out the sizes that work best for me. So that's something you may have to do. Depending on your setup, you may not have to do this at all. Um, but the next step, once I'm ready, is I need to add the registration marks for the GraphTech. And so within Corel, I just go to Launch and then Registration Marks. It takes a second to actually pull up the plugin. It's here. There's some different settings uh, through here, and I've changed a few things a while back I believe I changed this margin um, I don't think I changed the thickness or length of these um, but I don't recall what actually came up by default I do know this works for me now and uh, I don't change anything uh, anymore so this pops up and I literally just click OK and it adds in these registration marks to the file um, at this point basically I'll just come in and go ahead and publish this to PDF um, I need to get this to the so Ryan's file. And this is going to be and uh, export that out. And then um, basically, I, just, I print that out. You know, this will be added into my VersaWorks file. Um, I'll go ahead and cut over and show that. And that's uh, here. Take a second for that to load. So let's change. I don't have 54 inch material loaded right now. I'm printing another job. So for now, I'm just going to uh, change this so we can um, move forward at least with the video. So basically, I pile, uh, tile two of them. I space them an inch and a half apart. And I'm going to flip it this way. Um, and then go through my settings. I do glossy calendared. I'm going to print that high quality for these. That shouldn't matter. But uh, this is just habit that I go through and change these settings. I don't need crop marks here because I already have them for my graph tech. But I am going to have a page space of 90 millimeters. Basically, that adds a tail onto the end of the job. Uh, basically, here actually. Um, so that you don't get end of page on graph tech and it's the same way on the VersaCam if you uh, if you do a print and cut and laminate separately um, you want to add 
a nine, if you add a 90 millimeter tail there, then you won't run into that. Or you know, some people will cover up their rear sensor and that sort of thing, but it'll actually leave the tail of vinyl there, so you don't have any issues. And then I'm going to do print only because I'm going to cut this on my GraphTech. Click OK, and I'm going to go ahead and start the rip job on that. Um, I'm going to fin up, finish up uh, another job, this one here that I'm working on at the moment. And um, once I get this other stuff printed, I'll come back and show you basically how I cut everything on the, on the graph tech. Alright, so I've got the uh, print done and I went ahead and actually loaded uh, material. Let me switch cameras real quick. Um, got my material loaded into the machine there, you can see. Right now it's all the way to the front and what I want to do is a test cut to make sure that my die cut settings are good. Um, so real quick I just want to go over how I do that. So basically I've got uh, just a circle set up. The circle is an uh, inch and a quarter. And I'm going to go ahead and launch um, the cut plot, the Cutting Master 4. I'll take a second for that pop up. See a circle down here in the, in the bottom right. And um, basically I'm playing around with uh, double cutting. And so actually on, uh, on this page here of uh, the cut plot here, basically I've got two passes set up. And so I'm playing around with this a little bit. Um, but uh, I'm going to send that job. And we'll get that to cut and do a test cut real quick. And just see how my settings are. right out pretty easily but it it wasn't so much that it um, that it came out on its own it was in there and basically I had to pop it out but once I did that it's a nice clean cut so settings are dialed in and um, let me set this back to the home position and I'm gonna get it set up to actually cut so in order to do this it's gonna be difficult to see from the camera there but you can see this crop mark on the uh, on the camera, basically what I'm doing is setting where the blade uh, cuts at, kind of right inside of this area here. Um, and it's, it'll come up on the screen in a minute, and you'll see it. And basically, I just need that the cutter head itself to be in that position. Let me switch back to the desktop. done here all right so let's go back to our job so this is the original um, print job that I'd saved over as a PDF still have it open in Corel because I need to use the uh, Cutmaster software to actually perform the cut based on the, uh, the magenta cut line here so a while ago I went ahead and read in I pulled the size and got that pulled in you notice here I only have one layer and this is actually, let me close out, this is actually a uh, PNG. I believe it may have even been JPEG. Um, once you get down here in the power clip and all. Yeah, it's an actual PNG file itself. So even this is not a vector uh, file, the, uh, the underlying uh, text that's there. That's an actual PNG file, and I just added the cut line to that. Doesn't necessarily matter for what we're trying to show here in terms of the print and cut, but just wanted to point that out. So that's why nothing else shows up here in terms of these layers, um, and nothing else is showing uh, in terms of that text or anything. Um, so I do have the two passes turned on again. Um, we're just going to cut that one line, and I don't change anything else. I do have this advanced after plot just so it gets to the end of the page, um, and we do have registration marks turned on. So once I click send, this message pops up that says load the media into and position the head uh, over the first mark located at the bottom right corner. And that's what I did a while ago that I uh, pulled up on the machine. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to change, actually I'm going to change cameras and then I'll click OK. Alright, back to this one and click OK. So it's actually just going to read reading. This video 
uh, extend out a bit and just let it go through the whole process and I'll show you how easily I can pop these out of here. But as this is cutting, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, you notice there's no movement. The vinyl itself is not lifting up. Um, as it's cutting, it's not, you know, say cutting with too much force, if you will, where it's popping out of there. Because I, you be careful with that when you, when you put too much pressure and that vinyl starts to lift up out of there, what will happen is the um, that vinyl will start to lift out and it'll jam in the actual cutter head um, once it jams up. And you basically have to either start over the job. In some cases, you can try to salvage some of it. I've done that a couple of times. But, um, you know, it's just I'm going to be pretty careful with the, uh, with the pressure and just getting that dialed in pretty good. So hopefully uh, this will only take a, a minute or so to, uh, to go through and cut. And I'll show you how easy it is to pop these out of here. I haven't been doing the double cut for very long. I tried it, uh, I guess it was about a week or so ago. And um, the primary thing that I've noticed with it is I don't have to crank the, uh, the cut force itself up so high. So I can actually cut on a, a bit of a lesser force. And just, it does take more time because I have to go down and cut twice though. So sacrificing time a bit, uh, but not having to increase pressure so quite so high. I don't really have a preference there. You know, the few times that I've done the double cut so far, um, I haven't really noticed anything different in terms of the, the cut itself. Um, but one thing that I noticed prior is that when I was getting uh, dull blades, for example, as a blade was in the process of dulling, if I'm doing jobs, you know, I'd have to go in and kind of tweak that the cut force and increase it over time uh, to get it to cut all the way through. And so I'm thinking by being able to do the double cut, it'll allow me to use, like I said, that, that lesser amount of force to kind of extend, I'll say, kind of extend the life of the blade or just get more usable time out of it um, by not having to increase that cut force so high. I'm not sure just yet, but I haven't been, like I said, doing the double cut very long, but so far I think that's kind of the direction I'm probably going to go. I do wish this would start on this side and feed the other way like it normally does when you're just doing regular cut vinyl, but I don't know why. Um, but it starts on the back and works its way forward. If anybody does happen to know the uh, setting to swap that, that would be great. I, I have reached out to GraphTech once via email and never got a response back. But, um, that's something I'd like to, to look into a little further at some point. It would be nice if it started on this end, if I could start popping these out as it worked its way to the other side. Alright, so done cutting. And I'm just going to hop in real quick and I'll show you how easily those just pop right out of there. Alright, and so, I mean, they're, they're in there good enough that it's not going to pop out on its own. But at the same time, they, um, come out easily cut clean and um, you know good solid color obviously so that's about it uh, if you guys got any questions feel free to send me a message or comment on the video and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can